So it's been officially half a year since the release of Spider-Man 2 PS5 that launched with a banger, banger, banger release of the fastest selling PS PlayStation game. Um, it, it's it's kind of crazy to me how the hype went from the wait went from so hype. The game gets out and then now we're at this six month period. And unfortunately, we're we're at a stale with the uh, the audience. Uh this is Zani the Greatest. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and welcome to my channel where I am trying to, I guess, play devil's advocate here for Spider-Man. Um, not really defending it. I get the sentiments around the game after playing through it for hours. <laughs> but with all that being said, I have made my, you know, case and I wanted to share it with you guys. And, you know, maybe some of you guys feel the same way. Spider-Man 2 has got a lot of uh, heat recently, um, but the heat for what, I, I don't quite know. I, I can tell you that it's definitely not the transversals or the gameplay, as that is some of the best I've seen in, in gaming um, when it comes to superheroes and all that good stuff. The problem is we have is, is, is the story. I think the story really, really, really is what is kind of drawing people or steering people away and i kind of went to shed some light on the story just to maybe see if that helps digest the direction that this is going in when we take into account uh spider-man 2's biggest biggest success why they're so successful is because of their storytelling let's let's be honest the gameplay is phenomenal phenomenal and the transversal is great but when you pair it like the first game where the first game's gameplay if you go back to now versus now it's it's way better now than it was before the spider-man when you know his tricks were kind of uh it's, it's kind of stiff but it still was great gameplay at the time and it was combined with a great story the story and the gameplay worked hand in hand what i think spider-man 2 did differently here was they tried to kind of showcase the gameplay and give you a story later and i don't know you know which one it was i feel like they just had their plan before and they just tried to tie the pieces together instead of crafting a story and then crafting you know the gameplay around it and stuff like that but Again, like what I want to say again, shed light on is the entire overall franchise and the direction that it's going in. When it comes to the creative direction of where Spider-Man, you know, and Marvel and Insomniac Games as in general is going as a whole going forward, what I think we have to kind to kind of take into account is that Peter Parker's story in the first one was about Peter Parker and you know how you know. When Spider-Man wins, Peter Parker loses. That's all. This that's his story throughout his entire time he's been created by Stan Lee. That's his, his whole, you know, thing. You can be Spider-Man too, but you know, there's a cost. There's a there's a price to pay for for being a hero. And when you get into the second one with Miles Morales, it's the same concept here, but it's more so about living up to the challenge. It's about you know, you're not always gonna have the help you need. You know, can you can you do it on your own? Can you do it without another Spider-Man? So now we get into the second Spider-Man here. And I think what we wanted was we wanted it for it, especially seeing Venom, we wanted for it to be the tipping or the topping or the icing on the cake to the last two. But we got to slow it. We got to slow down. Let's slow down. There's still a third Spider-Man coming out. I think we misjudged this game or missed where this game was trying to take us. This was a game to have us live in the moment. What I mean by that is, if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, you look at Spider-Man as a whole in a franchise, and you look at it from a storytelling aspect, I'd like to say that Spider-Man 2 is the fun and games period of the story. It's our moment to enjoy the two Spider-Man that we had hoped to be in the same game. Remember that when the first Spider-Man came out and the second one came out, we had all been wishing, like, hey, like, oh my gosh, the next one has to be this. Like, we have to play with two Spider-Man, have to be. And we get it, and it's like we're not trying to live in the moment. It's like we're not trying to live in that before the story does take us somewhere. Now, 
Is that any excuse for the story to be subpar in any way? No, 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 no. I'm not making any excuses for the story, but I'm trying to, again, show you a way to maybe make you pivot your, your perspective to see that the story was crafted with a bigger picture in mind, if that makes sense. And so when we get to your fun and games period of any story, there's got to be a time where you just dwell and enjoy. And I think that's what happened at the end where it was like, just enjoy your time. Enjoy your time. And I think Peter Parker is definitely going to be back in the next Spider-Man. I don't think, I don't know why people took that as he was never coming back. The start of Spider-Man 3, he's probably going to be back. It's probably going to be a situation where he has to come back. This is just, he's probably just going to say, oh, within six months or seven months or so, Peter Parker got his rest or something. And now he's back or something. Let's just not jump to conclusions here. But with that being said, I want us to give this game the cushion it needed to be the leverage to the next game to be the topping point to top all of this off. The theme of this was symbiote. The next theme after this, I, I don't know where they're going to go, but it has to be it has to be great. And it, it probably going to lead us into something greater. We have Wolverine and other games coming out from the Marvel Universe in terms of games. And, I, I, you know, people are speculating that some of these games are going to tie in together. So let's leave those let's just have room for that. And I feel like Spider-Man 2, again, where they did go wrong was they did introduce something catastrophic. You know, symbiotes taking over the entire world or taking over New York. That's kind of... Avengers level threat. I mean, I, I, I don't think that we, I think we, if you would have been fine, if it, it was marketed, if it was played the way it was marketed, because it was marketed as if Venom was just going to be a street level fight. Like, you remember that, you remember that whole trailer that we got, the cinematic trailer, like it was fighting on the streets. It wasn't a whole, the symbiotes weren't like taken over or anything. It just looked like they was fighting on the streets. And that's what we thought we were going to do a street level, just hairy and Peter going, Peter and Miles going at it. We didn't get that, but what we did get was in uh, a a world that they built that I don't think is going to last forever. I don't think the symbiote thing is going to last forever. I think this is just their way of introducing the symbiotes into the world. Again, I did think it was a little dramatic the way they did it, and it didn't really serve any true per true purpose. So that's, again, I always said this that the story is not better than the first. It's not better than the second. Uh, when it comes to Miles Morales, but it is not that it's not bad. It's not a bad story, and it's, it's actually compelling. It actually teaches a lot. It teaches a lot about the the weight it takes to for for even one person to ba juggle their ev everyday responsibilities, and even the responsibility of knowing when to quit. Peter Parker has been doing this for years. You know, when is your time going to be to just rest and just Look at the sunset. Miles, you've been doing this for years. Can you do this on your own? Like, how many enemies can you take on? Like, how strong are you? Like, these lessons and these self uh improvements and people, you know, saying that, you know, they didn't improve in their story. Maybe Peter or Miles didn't improve that much, but we got introduced to Harry, which I think was I think he was so underrated in this. I don't know why anybody, I don't really see anybody highlighting Harry's character. He was so compelling to watch and watch him go from, you know, the Harry that was so loving to this Venom and creepy character, you know, that again, wasn't him. He was taken over. But again, it showed, you know, Harry's character and a lot of moments it showed his 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 passion and his emotion. His, his voice acting was great. So I don't know. Harry just really brought the emotion to it you know all these lessons you know all these it's, just, it's a lot of lessons that it tried and i think what the problem was that yes it threw all these lessons at you and it just didn't seem well organized and maybe it just i just digested it better because i just looked at it with a different perspective and i kind of wanted to share that with you guys maybe i'm talking uh crazy or maybe you guys have some other thoughts spider-man 2 is a phenomenal game i play this game almost every day i love this game so it's nothing anybody can say can make me hate this game, but I will agree with some objective sentiments and some objective points where the story did make this game kind of tip the trajectory. So which is why I always gave it an 8 out of 10. It, it, you know, great for me is that's an 8 out of 10 to me. Uh, the game has always been sitting at an 8 out of 10, but that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and get on some more Spider-Man 2 content. Peace.